time for the least controversial opinion of the 21st century. I love video games. I'd even go as far as to call myself a gamer. Some of my favorite games to play while unwinding in ascending order of anxiety are Destiny 2, Rocket League, and Apex Legends. I even stream on Twitch if you ever want to stop by. <laughs> cough, cough. Despite all the stuff that is still happening this year, it has still been a great year for video games. And I'm not just talking about how Animal Crossing shattered sales records along with our imminent sense of isolation. No, what I'm talking about, and will be talking about, is cloud gaming. For over a year now, Microsoft, Google, and NVIDIA have been introducing us to the amazing world of cloud gaming. The idea is simple. Stop paying for an Xbox, stop paying for games, just pay us however much per month and we'll take care of the rest. And honestly, it's genius in ways I don't think a lot of folks appreciate. So today I'm hoping to shed a little more light on cloud gaming, what it means for gamers, what it means for devs, and what it's meant for me. Let's start with a quick recap. Imagine you wanna play Halo. You'd probably need the game disc, an Xbox, a TV, and if you want to play more than four-person multiplayer, an internet connection. Companies like Microsoft realized that this was a bad business proposition because if I want to play the latest Halo game, every few years, I'm going to have to shell out a few hundred bucks just to then be able to buy a $60 game that I might play twice and never again. At which point, I and many others would likely think to ourselves, do I really need a new console? To solve this problem, they looked at movies. I realize this is all an oversimplification, but stick with me. Imagine how you used to watch movies. You or your parents probably used to watch them on an archaic artifact like a DVD or the eldritch horror that was the VHS. As the internet and computers got better, companies realized that instead of selling all that hardware just to watch movies, they could sell access to a whole database of movies that a server could stream straight to you. No need for discs or clunky players. You could watch more movies than you could physically fit in your house on any device with an internet connection, all for the low price of $13 a month, way less than the $20 you were probably paying. Companies like Microsoft saw the same potential for games. Instead of paying 500 bucks for a new Xbox and then another 60 for every game, you can pay $15 per month and get access to all the Xbox games you could ever wanna play and the platform to play them on. No updates, no downloads, no specialized hardware, no worrying if the game was backwards compatible, just gameplay. It's a way better business proposition than microtransactions and made more sense and more money as the internet and their own cloud platforms got better. Eventually, they won't even need to build Xboxes. They can just sell you the service and spin up an emulation of the hardware you'd need to play any game ever in less than five seconds. At this point, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, I kind of already knew that, so what? To which I'd say, so what? This is amazing. To baby Cameron, this would have been borderline magic. I loved Halo Combat Evolved more than any other shooter or possibly game ever. And yeah, sure, I could shell a $2,500 on a gaming rig just to see Master Chief's shiny helmet and stunning ray traced 4K 60 FPS. But for the same price, I can enjoy 13 years worth of playing the latest Xbox games, including Halo, on my phone, my laptop, my TV, and I guess if I really wanted to, an Xbox. But it goes beyond that. If you want to play a game with your friends or just play the latest game, you no longer need an at least decent gaming rig. Just shell out $15 for a month or two, do whatever you want, then cancel it till the next game you want comes out. No more consoles collecting dust, replacing old hardware, getting price gouged on eBay for a next gen console or haggling with GameStop employees. Just you and your games. Streamers also have it easier than ever. The fact that a different computer is handling the game means you can free up your computer for streaming your excellent gameplay as smoothly as possible. GeForce Now has built-in tools to record and save your play of the game to your computer without you ever hitting record. Now, I realize that a lot of companies I've mentioned probably scare folks. And justifiably, anyone might think this could turn the entire games industry into a giant copy pasta. But if there's one thing the streaming wars have shown us, it's that competition to get us to join these many services has also meant more talented creators getting a chance to share their unique stories in ways that the sheer cost of more traditional business models would never allow. As much as I think Steam is a great platform for small developers, I really think the way people make games and the types of games and stories we experience will become more diverse as each platform works to stand out. That said, this is when I need to acknowledge the obnoxious caveats of the games industry and how they might affect cloud gaming. 
Much like with the streaming wars, we have seen how the bizarro landscape of copyright licensing has meant that I can watch certain films in the US, but if I want to stream a certain TV show, I need to flip on my VPN, which doesn't really work for games because the lag alone would be awful. Likewise, I fear game developers may have an awkward time navigating the murky waters of licensing. Spending more time figuring out how their game fits into a platform rather than focusing on making the game they would be most proud of. We've already seen publishers like Blizzard dealing with this on GeForce Now, where gamers couldn't play games they had already paid for unless they upgraded to the paid version of GeForce Now. Which is a bit more annoying when you also realize a lot of single player games are on these platforms. You know, games that should and would never need an internet connection, but I'm not paying for a new gaming rig to play Halo Infinite's campaign, so oh well. And technically, you won't own games anymore. You'll be paying for access to all games on that service, even if you just wanted the one. And all of this is only possible on an at least half decent broadband connection, something that Microsoft's own research revealed half of the US doesn't have access to. This is a very US centric problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. That said, I don't expect companies to suddenly become beacons of integrity and pragmatism overnight, and I don't want that to paint how I see cloud gaming. No, I see cloud gaming as a bet. A bet on the future of how we all interact in the digital age. There was a time when my brother and I would spend hours playing Halo's local co-op, when I raced roommates in Mario Kart to settle who would handle the pile of dishes blocking the sink. A time where consoles were a nexus for building friendships. And it's a little sad to think that despite single player games, Halo and Mario Kart still very much being a thing, that time feels like it's coming to an end. And yet, despite all this, I'm very hopeful. As I mentioned, three of my favorite games are now free to play, and GeForce Now, despite its modest flaws, is free, meaning that I and my friends can play Apex, Rocket League, and Destiny 2 for free using Chromebooks and phones. But let's be realistic, if you really want to play them for more than an hour at a time, you'll want to shell out that $5 a month for the actual GeForce Now. And to me, that is really amazing to think about, that especially now, when we all find ourselves trapped inside with ever-limiting resources, the barrier to playing games with friends online has never been lower. And with all that said, I'm curious to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment on what you think the future of cloud gaming will be like. And I'll see you next time.